Welcome to the Foundation Series Part 2. In the first part, we talked about the logical absolutes, and I explained how they are merely self-evident truth statements. They're absolute. And they are, to my mind, best expressed by this simplest Venn diagram, which would be a single circle in the surrounding area, representing A and not A. I also mentioned that they don't give you any information contextually. They don't tell you anything about the specifics of the category that you've selected. They don't tell you that you got your definition right. They're not about categorizing. They are the structure that affirms our ability to categorize with certainty. Carrying on from that, in part two today, I'm going to talk a little bit about logical arguments, specifically categorical syllogisms. Now, a syllogism is just a logical argument where you attempt to derive a conclusion from a premise or multiple premises. And the categorical syllogisms are, were essentially the forms that were uh, investigated and developed by Aristotle and his merry band of logical superheroes. Categorical syllogisms specifically have four different types of statements. In later times, these were labeled A statements, E statements, I statements, and O statements. Those are the types of statements, and they go together in a structure where you have a major premise, a minor premise, and a conclusion. And each of those three statements, major, minor, and conclusion, take the form of either an A statement, E statement, I statement, or O statement. What are those statement forms? Well, A statements are universal affirmatives, things like all X's are Y's. E statements are universal negatives, like no X's are Y's. I statements are categorical affirmatives, which is some X's are Y's. And O statements are categorical negatives, which would be some X's are not Y's. That's all four possibilities. You can draw up a little uh, truth diagram to sort it out. And so those can go together in a number of different orders and combinations for each of the three statements. And then you can switch around the order of major and minor premises, whether your predicates come first, etc. I'm not going to get into all of that. In the end, though, there are either 256 or 512 different syllogistic forms, depending on what you swap around. And the cool thing is that only 24 of them are valid. Now, what's that mean, valid? Well, when we're evaluating syllogisms, there's two criteria that we can use to do this. The first is validity. And validity only addresses the structure. It is the content of the argument is completely irrelevant. It's also, I think, the more important of the two. Specifically, the more important of the two to understand A categorical syllogism is valid, or actually any logical argument is valid, if and only if true premises necessarily lead to true conclusions. Now that's a big deal, and it ignores content. This is only about structure or form of the argument. Soundness is the second criteria by which we judge syllogisms, and that's where the content comes into play. An argument is sound if the structure is valid and the premises are true. Or, some would argue, and you accept the premises to be true. I'm not going to get into a side uh, argument about truth and how we can determine it uh, at this moment. But I will say that there's the reason I raise that is because if we're talking about being rational and using logical arguments to help us make rational decisions, then if the structure of the argument is valid, then whether or not the premises are true, if you accept that they are true, then you must accept the conclusion if you are going to remain rational. It may turn out that the premises are wrong, in which case we have a structure that's unsound, which doesn't mean the conclusion is false, it just means we don't know 
whether the conclusion is false or not. So when it turns out that there's 24 of these forms that are valid, you can demonstrate this by using Venn diagrams. This is what brings us back to the logical absolutes and this self-evident truth expressed in the simplest Venn diagram translates over to more complicated Venn diagrams, which are used to then prove the categorical syllogistic forms that are valid. And the statement types that were lettered, uh, they were labeled with letters A, E, I, and O, were then used to give each of the forms, each of these 24 forms, a name, like Barbara or Celerant or Darii. Um, all three vowel names that were just a mnemonic to remember the form. And so it would be easy to remember which, you know, you came across a form, you labeled the uh, three statements, and whatever label the mnemonic matched, if, there, if, there, if you had a series of labels that matched a mnemonic of a valid syllogism, then you knew the structure was valid. And the content could then be judged separately. When we're first processing arguments, one of the first things we want to do is look to see, is this valid? Because you could have true premises in an argument whose structure is invalid and you are wasting your time because you cannot confirm that the conclusion is true. That's the powerful part of the logical absolutes as they apply to categorical syllogisms. These 24 forms, we can be absolutely positive that the structure is such that true premises necessarily lead to true conclusions. And those are the arguments that we care about. We don't care about invalid arguments, because if you put in true premises, you might get a true conclusion, you might not. Now, it's still good to know the invalid forms, or some of them, and why they're invalid. Specifically, there's a number of structural fallacies. There's a great wealth of information out there. You can get really good books on logic that are college level and everything else, but you can also just hit the internet. And even just starting at Wikipedia is a good start. There are much better sites that, that go into logical fallacies and um, branch out beyond categorical syllogisms to propositional logic and uh, various types of notation. But the key element that I want to make sure I got in the video is that we move from video number one, the logical absolutes, to number two, how those absolutes bolster the this, this structure or describe the structure that allow us to determine whether or not an argument is valid. And in future videos, I may address a little bit more about soundness, but that's all the foundation I needed in order to get moving on with the other definitional things and kind of branch off into different topics. Thanks for watching. See you next time.